It'll just take a minute, all right? You... The audience just wants to know that when we promise midgets, we deliver midgets. We are the most midget-friendly network on cable. We love the little people. So come on out. Please, would you just do this? Dwarves, elves, the little elfin ones. We love them all. All right, this is not funny. You said you were going to do this. You know, get your little three foot eight hiney out here now, okay? I mean, if you if you don't get out here right now, you're going right back to the room. You want to go to the room? And this time, no snacking. All right? That's it. Well, he had to run off to one of his many midget charity events, but uh, you'll see what I'm talking about tonight. Only on Monster Vision, all right? Check it out. Okay, get the damn harness. Watch Troll, next on TNT's Monster Vision. Hey, Joe Bob Briggs here with the number one rule for a TNT Monster Vision movie. Anybody can die at any moment. Save yourself from Troll, coming up next on TNT's Monster Vision. movie tonight you know people don't believe this when I tell them we have this movie tonight called troll where Sonny Bono gets attacked by fungus face midgets and turned into a giant Caesar salad with a bad singing voice now I realize this is roughly what Cher did to him in the divorce settlement but we have it with a lot more slime spewing and then our second feature is trancers Another great low-budget 80s movie that doesn't make a lick of sense. So this is one of our theme nights on Monster Vision. The theme is movies that start with TR, <laughs> Troll and Trancers. The programming guys were drunk, and they said, oh, hell, what are the next two on the alphabetical list? That would be Trancers and Troll. You know, well, mix it up so they don't know how we came up with them. Show Troll first. Anyway, I'm Joe Bob Briggs, and I have a new rule for surviving in the modern world. This is what I want to talk about tonight. Never date a woman between the ages of 37 and 41. You know why? The dinner conversation is likely to go like this. You say, that's a beautiful dress you're wearing. She says, if you think it's sexy, perhaps you'd like to fertilize my ovum tonight. <laughs> See, these women think they have to have a baby within the next five minutes or their life will be over. Even the ones who already have babies. So if you happen to be caught in their crosshairs, you could all of a sudden find yourself waking up the next morning next to the teddy bear on her chenille bedspread, screaming, oh my God, what did I do? Because what, and you know what's really sick about it? Some of them don't even want a husband. If they could get away with it, they'd get you to plant that seed and then they'd catch a greyhound to Wasilla, Alaska and raise the kid among the Eskimos. And if he ever grew up and started asking about his father, she'd say something to him like, oh, he was that guy back in Texas who didn't love you. Well, of course he didn't love you. He didn't know you existed. We've got women all over the lot pulling a Madonna and deciding that I want a little human being in my life. Of course, that doesn't mean that six years from now, when those car payments start piling up and the little booger is enrolled in Montessori school, she might not miraculously find your phone number and suggest you're a worthless scum dog for not sending $9,000 a month for your son's education. But I've got a better idea, right? Why don't we just find one guy preferably some dim-witted hunk named Enzio who likes women who are 37 to 41, we hire him to impregnate all of these ladies. I mean, the meanest judge in the world is not going to make him pay child support for 700 kids. And meanwhile, it'll be fun for Enzio. I mean, we can make the ladies give him plenty of orange juice, buy him a little vitamin E from time to time, take him to dinner on the night before they start ovulating. And that way, the rest of us would be out of danger. You know what I mean? See, I'm still not ready for the 90s, and the 90s are almost gall darn over, aren't they? Speaking of people who appear to be acting under the influence of radioactive green slime, this week's flick is Troll, the story of a family that moves into a new apartment and signs a lease without asking whether there are monsters in the laundry room first. 
<laughs> so they deserve everything they get when Torok the Troll possesses the body of their little snitty daughter and starts going door to door, turning people into botany experiments and trashing their apartment with jungle vines. Fortunately, June Lockhart is the good witch living upstairs playing with her pet mushroom and saying, remember when I was on Lassie? <laughs> We're talking condo vegematic, so let's take a look at those drive-in totals. Nine dead bodies, two breasts. We will not be seeing breasts on TNT. I have to point that out every week. Two quarts blood, three great mush face transformation scenes, eight beasts, including Sonny Bono, gratuitous Shelly Hack, fungus foo, and with a special appearance by Julia Louis-Dreyfus as the naked nympho in the forest. Two and a half stars. Check it out. We're going to be here all night showing classics from the vault of Empire Pictures, the lowest budget studio in Hollywood throughout the 80s. Roll it. What are you doing Saturday night? Hi, I'm Reno, the new Monster Vision mail girl, and I'd like you to hang out with me and the world-renowned drive-in critic, Joe Bob Briggs, on Monster Vision on TNT. Be there or beware. You've got a date with Reno and Joe Bob Briggs for Monster Vision every Saturday night on TNT. We will return to Troll in a moment on TNT's Monster Vision. And coming up, watch Trancers next on TNT. Back to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs and Troll on TNT. Well, I promised Sonny Bono, and as you can see, we delivered Sonny Bono. Sonny as a jaded, liquor-guzzling playboy. This is one of about a dozen film roles Sonny has had, beginning with the immortal Good Times in 1967, and including such classics as Murder in Music City and Airplane 2. And uh, is Sonny still the mayor of Palm Springs, by the way? Does anybody know? Congressman. Congressman. He's a... a Sonny Bono, U.S. Congressman, Representative Sonny Bono is who we're talking about tonight. Those who remember the 70s will recall that Sonny and Cher used to have a new TV show every year and then it'd get canceled every year and then they'd start it up all over again. The Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour, the Sonny Comedy Review, Cher, that was the whole name of that show, just Cher, and the Sonny and Cher Show. That's the one they did after they realized that separately they couldn't make it in TV and they had to be together for people to watch them. Only by that time they were divorced and Cher had a baby by another guy. And uh, wasn't it Greg Allman? Who did she have the baby by? It was Greg Allman. Only she was already divorced from him by the time the baby was three months old. And they were trying to use their daughter Chastity on the show, fighting over her. You know, she's going to be on my show. No, she's going to be on my show. And all this happened in about six years and then suddenly... It was over. Enough Sonny and Cher. Forget it. No way. We're sick of it. Stop. Which is why, less than 10 years later, you find Sonny doing a bit character part in Troll. Back to the movie. See, we take care of you here at Monster Vision. I got you, babe. You know who was on some of those Sonny and Cher shows? The great Flip Wilson. Loved him. They were, see, Sonny and Cher were trying to do comedy. And neither one of them has a comic bone in their bodies, and so they hired a bunch of comic actors to surround them on those shows. Murray Langston, later known as the Unknown Comic. Uh, Terry Garr, great comedian. Shields and Yarnell. You know, I almost went through the rest of my life without remembering that Shields and Yarnell exist, but now it's too late, see? Want to win a Monster Vision t-shirt? Who wouldn't? Does the Pope go in the woods? Try your luck at the Monster Caption Contest. Want details? Go to tnt.turner.com slash monstervision and the rules will be staring you right in the face. But if you don't win, don't come whining back to me because I don't have any sympathy for people who enter contests. Play the Monster Caption Contest and win a free t-shirt at tnt.turner.com forward slash monstervision. Back to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs and Troll on TNT. Hey, wait a minute. Those ugly little trolls look exactly like the ghoulies from last week's movie, Ghoulies. 
I don't guess that'd have anything to do with this movie being produced by the same guy, Charles Band, and released by the same company, Empire Pictures, and directed by John Carl Buechler, the special effects guy who created the Ghoulies. Nah, nah. They wouldn't just stick those puppets in a warehouse for two years and then say, well, everybody's forgotten about these things by now. Let's call them uh, trolls. And we'll distract them by turning Sonny Bono into a black and blue slime guapola vegetable pod that sprouts into a misty jungle. And what was the other plot element in Ghoulies last week? Friendly midgets, right? What do we got here? Gall dang friendly midget in this movie. The talented Phil Fondacaro as the dwarf who befriends the little girl. But what you might not have noticed is that Phil is playing a double role. He's also the troll in that special effects makeup. Why hire two midgets when you can find a real versatile midget? In other words, they ripped off their own movie, only they went over to Italy so they could make it for half the cost, and they only used one midget instead of two. They thought they'd fool us, didn't they? But see, they didn't count on the eternal vigilance of the Monster Vision Research Department. So that I can now say to you with authority, these are recycled slime puppets. I'm appalled. Roll film. Sometimes they don't even bother to paint enough slime on the side of the creature to cover up the latex seam on there. I mean, there's low budget, and then there's let's get real here. My little sister can make better movies than this, and she doesn't even have a camera. Crayola flip charts is what she does. How many hours a day do you waste on the worldwide wait, watching pictures of supermodels peel down your computer screen one millimeter at a time? Hey, look, Cindy Crawford's kneecap. Have a beer, we'll wait for the thigh to come up. Well, why, why, why do that when you could be wasting more time at the Monster Vision website, 24 hours a day, located at tnt.turner.com slash Monster Vision. We got at least five different ways to fritter away your life, acting like you've actually got something to do. Can't get enough horror in your life? Then visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Kill them! Kill them! Kill them all! Evil comes in small packages. Hi. Really small packages. Tear into child's play. One week from tonight at 10 on TNT's Monster Vision. Back to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs and Troll on TNT. I think this movie would be worth watching just for one scene. That scene where Michael Moriarty dances around the living room to Blue Cheer's loud rendition of Eddie Cochran's Summertime Blues. That little groove dance is hysterical, and Michael Moriarty has given his usual quirky, interesting performance. He's kind of a man born to wear a pork pie hat, if you know what I mean. Anyway, you know, we just had him a few weeks back in his quirkiest performance of all time. It's Alive 3, Island of the Alive, and he's made a lot of offbeat Larry Cohen flicks like Q, the Winged Serpent, and The Stuff, and he gave the performance of his life in a little low-budget film that practically nobody saw called The Hanoi Hilton, but early in his career, he was strictly an A-movie guy. He made the last detail and banged the drum slowly, and then he went to New York and pretty much devoted his career to the stage, and now he lives up in Halifax, Nova Scotia, which is just about as quirky as you can get. Michael Moriarty, the quirkmeister, roll it. Oh yeah, here's the part where we're supposed to feel enormous love and respect for the midget. I guess they felt guilty for making the midget so evil in Ghoulies that this is sort of like the good-hearted midget. So, fine, that's fine with me. No dwarf bowling in this movie, forget it. Back to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs and Troll on TNT. <laughs> yes, indeed, that was Julia Louis-Dreyfus running naked through a jungle. But not only that, the guy who's chasing her through that jungle is Brad Hall, her husband in real life. So what I'm wondering is, I wonder what mom and dad say if little five-year-old Henry one day says, I want to watch this movie Troll on late night cable. 
Because <laughs> actually, Julia and Brad have worked together almost their entire lives. They were buddies at Northwestern University. They worked together on Saturday Night Live. They've lived together since 1981. They've been married since 1987. He's a very successful TV writer now. He produced that series, Brooklyn Bridge. And now he's the executive producer of The Single Guy. Is that still on? Single Guy? Did that go off? I don't remember. Okay, it's off. But the reason they were hired for Troll is that they agreed to stay for the whole five-week shoot, even though they were only paid for a couple of days at the beginning and a couple of days at the end. Now, why would they do that? Because the movie was shooting in Rome, and they wanted a free vacation. Isn't that cute? Okay, back to Troll. Julia's uh, great-great-grandfather founded the Louis Dreyfus Group, financial services, you know, and her father is chairman of the Dreyfus Group, so it's like she's probably one of the highest paid actresses in television, but when she calls Daddy on the phone, she says, I have my own money now, Daddy. It's from this show called Seinfeld. We made a pretty good deal this year. And he says, how much? Uh-huh. Oh, isn't that cute, a little acting job? Because the Dreyfus Group, that's like, you know, it's like here's Germany, here's Japan, and then third in assets would be the Dreyfus Group. They don't know how much money that is because nobody has time to count it, you know. So she's calling, hi, Dad, I'm over in Rome. I'm making this movie called Troll, and it's 200 a day. And Dad goes, very good, daughter. 200,000 is not bad at all for a day's work. <laughs> I know, you've been hearing all these rumors about what happens in the Monster Vision chat room, and I swear that girl told me she was 18. But it can get pretty hairy in there on Saturday nights, so I would advise you to check it out, unless you have, at any time in your life, been married to me. That address is tnt.turner.com slash monstervision, and yes, Yvonne, that does mean you. Calling all mummies, ghouls, and vampires to Joe Bob's rec room now at tnt.turner.com forward slash monstervision. Back to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs and Trolls on TNT. So June Lockhart lets down her hair and becomes... Ann Lockhart. Wasn't that cute how they did that? June was pretty old, even when this movie came out. She's one of those actresses who has worked in seven decades. You know? She was in A Christmas Carol in 1938. I guess her heyday was in the 50s when she did Lassie, and then by the 80s she was doing this low-budget stuff like this movie and Chud 2, Bud the Chud. Remember that movie? <laughs> She did a movie called Dead Women in Lingerie. You guys remember, remember that movie? Also known as Wives. Only kidding. Remember what June Lockhart did on uh, Petticoat Junction? Speaking of bad 60s TV, she was Dr. Janet Craig on there all the time. Anyhow, she just gave the kid a magic golden sword, but it might be too late to save the midget English professor who goes around reciting bad poetry because it looks to me like he's already a really nasty-looking half-vegetable, half-elf kind of thing. So let's see what they do with this as we watch the conclusion of Troll. You know, this looks like a small movie, but in January of 1986, when it opened on a 1,000 movie screens, that's... You, don't remember, you realize how many screens that is? I think they thought people would like it because of the midget, you know? But why do they build up the midget make us feel sorry for the midget, and then turn him into a plant. <laughs> More important, will we get to see Julia Louis-Dreyfus again, and will she still be naked? That's what I want to know. Stay tuned for more Joe Bob Briggs on Joe Bob's Last Call, coming up next on TNT. Joe Bob Briggs still here. Pretty good final sequence there as the snarling, pig-faced, toothy, hairy-winged fuzz monster is electrocuted by Torok the Immortal Troll. 
Say that five times fast. Snarling, pig-faced, toothy, hairy-winged fuzz monster electrocuted by Torok the Immortal Troll. <laughs> Anyhow, kind of a convenient way to set up a sequel, isn't it? And there were not one, but two sequels. Troll 2, and then the third one was not called Troll 3. At the last minute, they changed the name to Crawlers. I guess the marketing value of that troll name had pretty much petered out. All right, so much for little midget demons taking over San Francisco apartment buildings. Next week on Monster Vision, we got another big double feature. We've got Phantasm 2 with the tall man creeping around through cemeteries, digging up bodies, reanimating them. Very good movie. That's actually our second feature. Our first one is a classic of the 80s, Child's Play, the original Chucky the Killer doll flick about a doll possessed by the spirit of dead serial killer Brad DeReef. Very scary week. Good week.